morning, everyone. So I want to talk a little bit about the logic of programmable logic controllers. It's pretty straightforward, but like I said earlier, it can kind of mess you up if you don't consider how PLCs work. So here I've drawn a couple things on the board. Maybe I'll put some squares around this. And this is kind of how it's set up in the software. In the center, we've got rungs, and that's our ladder logic. That's the program that we're going to build. And then off to the left-hand side, about halfway down on that left-hand toolbar, there's the data tables. There's the inputs and outputs, and there's timers and counters and, and integers, and, and there's a bunch of different data tables. But the main ones we're going to deal with are the inputs and outputs. So we've got our data tables, and we've got our logic. Now, PLCs, they're not smart creatures. They're not artificial intelligence. They're nowhere near as smart as your smartphone. With your, with your smartphone, for example, you can play a video. You can be in the middle of a phone call. You can be looking up an address. You can do a whole bunch of things all at once and smartphones do multitasking. So they're, they're very sophisticated, very powerful. PLCs are not sophisticated. They're very fast, but they're not really powerful. Like they can't, you can't play music on a PLC, it doesn't have enough memory. You can't play a video, it doesn't have nearly enough capacity to do a video. Um, but they can process logic, they can turn things on and off, and they can do it very fast. But the way they do it, they go through four steps. So they read, then they process the rungs, and then they write, and then they do their socialize and they talk. So let's, let's talk about what each one of those do. The first step is when they read. So they go out and they look at all the inputs and they read what inputs are hot. So on your trainer panel, you've got buttons that you can push, and that will send a hot signal into the PLC. So when they read, they're going to look at all the inputs, and they're going to update the, the tables, and they're going to just make a recording of what's hot and what's cold. And that's all they do in the, on that step. Now, they don't go back and read again until they come back around to step one. They read it one time, and that's it. The next step, they go and process all the rungs. And for example, if switch one is hot, so let's say that this address over here, this is switch one, and it's hot. So when it processes the rungs, it's going to say, OK, switch one is hot. And so I'm going to turn on a red light. And over in the output, it's going to put a one to turn on a red light, but it doesn't actually turn that light on yet. It's just making a note that it has to turn it on. So it goes through all the rungs and it figures out what it's going to do when it talks to the, to the outputs. So switch one is hot, so the red is gonna go hot and the rest of these are all cold. I think Sonus or speakers on, can you mute your speakers? Check your speakers. I hear an echo from over there somewhere. Okay, so step two, they process the rungs. They go through and figure out what they're going to do with all these outputs. And then in step three, they write all the information. They send it out to the world. So in step three, it's going to go over and look at its output table and say, okay, this guy's hot. So I'm going to send a hot signal out to the world, and I'm going to turn on that red light. And then, finally, in step four, it does talking. What do you think a PLC talks to? Nope, the trainer's part of this real world ready. What does a PLC socialize with? Who's in their social network? The computer? How about those touch screens on the wall? So it would talk this to a touch screen. And it would uh, 
maybe talk to another PLC. They, they sometimes talk to each other. So it's going to do all its socializing here in step four. And it has to do all these things in sequence. It does them very fast, so it looks like it's doing everything at the same time, but it's not. And this is where it catches you up sometimes. Let's look at my logic here. I've got switch one and switch two and switch three here on my inputs. And then over here, I've got a red light, a motor, a siren, a green light, and a red light again. So let's see what happens. When switch one is hot, it's going to say, I want to turn that red light on, right? So over here, it's going to make a note that the red light is going to be turned on. And then it's going to keep processing the rungs. So it doesn't turn that light on yet. It just makes a note that it has to when it comes time to write. And it goes, this is switch two is cold. Switch three is cold. Nothing's going on. This motor is not running, so nothing's going on here. Notice I have green and red outputs here, but they're not hot. So it's going to make a note that the red light is, is not on because it's turned off right here. And now when it gets to step three to write everything out to the world, it's going to say red light is turned off. And then it does the process again. So because it can't multitask with this first rung where I'm trying to turn on the red light, it's trying to turn it on, but then before it can turn it on down here, it actually turns it off again. So that red light never gets turned on. <clears throat> and you're going to find pretty soon why that matters. We're going to explore that a little bit. So that's the process of a PLC. And how fast do you think it does this process? Half a second. Half a second? Millisecond. Millisecond. Hundreds or maybe thousands of times a second? So it depends on several things. First of all, there's different PLC processors, so there's different speeds. It's like if you compare an iPhone 7 and an iPhone 11, they work at different speeds, right? They can both do similar stuff, but one's a lot faster. Also, right here, I've got four rungs of logic. I might have 400 rungs. So to do 400 rungs, it's going to take a little bit longer than to do four rungs. Maybe 100 times as long, right? So depending on how complex your program is your project and how fast the processor is it's going to process at different speeds but it does it very fast and so this is kind of a something you need to keep in mind that we have what's called destructive bits so here I tried to do something with the red light but anything I try to do with it gets canceled out by this later instruction because it, it destroys my command. It, it's a destructive bit. It doesn't give you an error. Sometimes you want to do that on purpose, but it, it's just something to be aware of. Any questions on that? It, we're going to go over this many times. So even if it's, if it doesn't quite make sense, don't, don't worry that, oh, I'm not getting it because it's all going to become clear once you run into a destructive bit and you're going to go, oh, that's what he's talking about with destructive bits. Now I see it working. Yeah. So if the top one, if the top red is powered up, it'll be red. But if both of them are powered up, it turns off or it never turns on. It's never going to turn on because no matter what you do up here, will get canceled out by what happens down here. So if I, if this motor is running, then the red light and the green light will be on no matter what I do with this switch. And so I kind of snuck this in too. Here I've got inputs, a bunch of switches. They're sending signals to my PLC. But on this last one, I said I want to use this motor as an input. 
Well, motor's an output, it's over here. So if I turn on switch two, my motor should start. And what I'm doing in my program, I'm saying is if this motor is running down here, I want to turn on the green light and the red light. So I'm using an output as an input. 